Hello and welcome to The Exchange. This episode is important because the leading cause of death in Australia in men aged 44 years and under is suicide. Although men are at greater risk than women, they are at least least likely to recognise symptoms, discuss their issues and seek proper treatment. Today's image of being a man is all about strength and power. Or is it? Strength to overcome your obstacles? Strength to be successful? Strength that looks good? Strength to be a family man? Strength to man up and not be a wuss? But what about the strength to deal with what's going on inside? The strength to recognise when depression affects you? The strength to open up about how you're feeling? The strength to ask, how can I deal with depression as a man? Howard Todd Collins is a counsellor and psychotherapist and founder of Men and Relationships Counselling Australia. He believes that given the right space and environment, men can open up and talk about their lives in a way that allows them to take steps to a happier life. Peter McClelland is the chief executive of Mates in Construction in New South Wales, a charity aiming to bring suicide rates down in the construction industry. It's good to have you both here. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you. Tell us, Howard, what is the difference between having a bad day and actually something not quite right? Sure. I think, um, you know, life has its ups and downs. We have down days. We have uh, life experiences that make us feel sad or, or a bit overwhelmed. And that's normal. It's, it's part of being human. What we get to uh, find with more significant issues, I guess, is the uh, emergence of other emotions and feelings. So, for example, if you're feeling down and that turns into despair or despondency or pessimism or a sense of worthlessness, that kind of more intense thoughts and feelings, and often accompanied with physical health issues, we might get really tired, uh, hard to get out of bed in the morning, uh, we kind of find our behaviour and mood begins to shift. And if they, they hang around for usually daily for about two weeks, we start to get into that kind of ter territory of depression. So lingering and excessive symptoms. Uh, we look at depression as being mild, severe or moderate, mm. depending on what the symptoms are. So you get to see the difference. Usually we bounce back up when life's tough. So yeah. you're saying if this persists for a period of a two weeks or yes. more, that really you should probably talk to someone about it? You need to go it? and check it out with somebody. That's the range. Two weeks or more is a long time to hold that kind of intensive experience mm. of life, yeah. Peter, I'm really interested in uh, what you're doing. Mates in construction, what inspired you to work with them? I've worked in the construction industry for about 30 years and uh, that uh, we recognised probably at about uh, seven years ago that uh, through statistics that became available through various industry schemes that operate, uh, that have a death benefit associated with it, that the um, uh, number of people who are making claims where the cause of death was suicide was alarming. For example, in Queensland, uh, in the construction industry, through an industry uh, fund, that particular year in 2007, 398 death claims had been paid out, but 88 were suicide. And that uh, led to the industry commissioning Griffith University to do a research project into the construction industry. And we found, as a consequence of that, that uh, construction workers have extreme elevated rates of suicide compared it's, to the community that, average. That's phenomenal. What, what would the community average be, Howard, of men committing suicide? Well, the latest stats that I've seen, we're looking at 80% of men suicide in terms of the whole numbers. So 80% of the overall suicide rates are men. men. Yes, in fact, uh, and just in that, suicide is, is it's the greatest cause of death with the greatest gender disparity. So I, I kind of read recently that something like 333 men will kill themselves compared to 100 women. It's like three to one. That so is pretty phenomenal. even though I think rates might be dropping, the concern still is around what men and how men are responding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course you've got a number of programs that you uh, have implemented through Mates in Construction that actually help with this. Tell us about yes. some of those. Uh, what we do is um, we've got a three level training system. The first level is a 45 minute general awareness training uh, where we, the purpose of which is to uh, shock, 
uh, and to uh, make people angry, to give them hope, and then to engage them in action to fix the problem. Uh, we shock them with the statistics, which we don't talk about. Mm. Uh, we then talk about how can you identify your mate when he's doing it tough? And then what can you do about it? Mm. The second level of training is what we call connectors. And um, they are our gatekeepers. That's a four hour training session. And we do uh, three things in that training. We help develop their listening skills, how and when to ask the right question, and then how to hook your mate up to help. Uh, the third is applied suicide intervention skills trained. Each worker who undergoes our training is given a particular coloured hard hat sticker. White for um, general awareness training, green for uh, connector, blue for applied suicide intervention skills trained. So they're identifiable on the job. And if um, someone recognises their mate is doing it tough, because often our mate who's doing it tough doesn't recognise it themselves, then they can uh, feel comfortable engaging in that discussion, have something on the job that they can immediately access. So that's, that's fantastic. Essential. Very practical. That's excellent. That's and and yeah. Howard, are there particular industries that suicide rates are higher in and, and have you identified those? Uh, there's a few that I'm aware of. I'm certainly not an expert, but I know, for example, the legal profession. I think there's a lot of high stress in the legal fraternity in, with lawyers and uh, within that kind of industry. That clearly, the construction industry I'm, I've been aware of before. I think the work is amazing that uh, Peter's doing up in New South Wales and beyond Victoria. I think they're doing something slightly different with. Um, there's a lot of high stress in the emergency um, personnel mm. industry, you know, from fireys to nurses, you know, uh, the medical profession who are trained actually in some ways to be very boundaried with their emotion because they're dealing with crisis all the time. But yet there is not enough processing of the experience of that in some of those industries. So that, those are some of the areas that I'm aware of. And I meet some of those, those people in my work, doctors and legal professionals and, and financial professionals who are kind of really struggling to know what to do with their overwhelming feelings mm -hmm. and the stress around it. Just on that as well, uh, taking it outside the realm of, yeah. of what a guy does, yes. is there a particular type of men? Like are, are there some guys that are more vulnerable to depression than others? It's a good question. And, and I, I, I think depression is very unique and very personalised, so uh, it's, I don't want to sort of generalise too much, but high achievers, guys who are high achievers, who have come from families of high achievers, um, will struggle to talk about mental health, emotional health issues through the family. There's a real strive for success. Um, the measure of happiness that goes with that, often career focused or financially focused. So you get some guys who, who are built to look very externally and provide for their families based on financial and material success, but it's hard work. I, uh, yeah. I, I think with that, that uh, um, there is a concern that uh, while you have certain sectors of the community that are more um, vulnerable, so, yeah. so to speak, I think it could be an error to actually focus on those uh, groups because suicide, poor mental health, does not discriminate. Mm. Uh, and uh, if we, uh, we should be aware of it, but we can't become fixated on it. That's a very good point. Yeah, and it's interesting, I think, on that is that the idea is that men hide in that respect, in, in any context of life. And I mean, that, we're just thinking about the symptoms of depression and the explanation of depression that I was raising earlier on, it actually looks different for lots of guys in some respects. And I'm very keen to hear more about it maybe from your perspective, Peter, as well. But the, what men do in response to their overwhelming feelings, if they're identifying it at all, will range from uh, getting angry, getting irritable, uh, getting restless with themselves, these are kind of more non-traditional signs from my perspective of maybe depression, but certainly uh, stress-related health issues. So they're, they're masking their responses by some of these other feelings and their behaviours. And we see that in lots of ways with guys. You know, the, if guys mask their feelings by denying or avoiding, they might find behaviours in terms of drinking too much or reckless behaviour around, you know, driving badly. And in fact, that um, drinking too much is often um, encouraged. Have a drink yes, and, and exactly. you'll be fine. You know, the bottle's the counsellor. Exactly. Uh, whereas the contrary is true. 
And what happens, of course, is it's a masking agent, but we know that alcohol and drugs actually uh, is a, 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 a premeditated idea of depression later on. Mm. It comes through the experience of substance use. So and that, of course, impacts on the people around them too. So if you, you, yes. you say the guy's a bit, you know, grumpy or whatever, then that yeah. will obviously impact on his family and so yeah, on. Exactly. And, and, you know, one of the consequences of underreported uh, depression or even other mental health issues is family breakdown, relationship breakdown, mm. um, and people don't know what to do. And, and the, the, I guess the other thing that for me with this, something that I think we said earlier on before we began to go live, was that when men get an opportunity to talk about what's going on, with a mate mm. or with a peer or with a group or even with a professional, they will open up and talk. It's that, it's that first step to yep. normalise and validate uh, men's ways of telling their own stories, yeah. which has a particular way, a particular unique approach, I think, to some degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. Peter, do you want to add to uh, that? Yeah, well, uh, men, uh, particularly in industries like the construction industry, which unfortunately is almost 100% mm. male-dominated, uh, gives rise to a certain culture uh, and uh, blokes like to think that they've got their stuff together or at yeah. least mm. yeah. um, uh, give other people the impression that they've got their stuff together yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they, they don't and if you can create um, an environment where they feel comfortable with someone yeah. uh, to talk about what's actually going on uh, they'll do so, but often they're not invited. No, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Mm. Often they're not invited. And maybe it's seen a little bit like you know the domain of the of the ladies who do this so well in yes. connecting with one another over coffee and all of that kind of stuff. And then we think that it's not a blokey thing. So one of the things that uh, in developing our program, we went out and talked to construction workers at all levels in the industry, and we put a question to them, and that is. Uh, do you think if you had a mate who was uh, suffering from poor mental health that you'd be able to do something to, to help them? And the answer was no. Because uh, you know, that's the realm of uh, psychologists, mm. etc. Mm. And then we said to him, well, if you were worried that a mate was considering suicide, you thought he may, do you think you could help him? And the answer was yes. Yeah. Yeah. And all suicide is, is the, the worst possible outcome of yeah. poor mental health. Yeah. Yeah. So well we. We frame um, our program to reflect the culture of the construction industry. Mm. Yeah, uh, and that's what's that's made amazing. it so yeah. successful. Yeah. Let's pick yeah. really up more good. of that yeah. in just a moment. Don't forget, if you'd like to know more, you can head over to our website. We'll be back with Street Talk and more right after this. <laughs> What level of awareness do you think uh, depression in men is at? Better than it was, but not as good as it should be. Significantly less than women. I think it's probably really low. I think a lot of men sort of assume anything that's mental health related doesn't exist. And certainly there's a lot of um, men that I know they do have mental health issues, but certainly would never mention it. I think it's a lot more than it used to be because there's a lot more information about it. There's programs and there's advertisements, there's Beyond Blue. It's changing. Um, and I think, from my perspective, in Victoria, Jeff Tennant's had a lot to do with that, uh, with Beyond Blue. There's more awareness now. My brother had bad depression about eight years ago, and I didn't even know about it. It wasn't until his wife told me last week. So I wasn't aware, but I talked to him more about it now and asked him to talk to his friends because I've also had it, and my father was manic depressive. So I try to share that knowledge with as many men as I can. Are you aware that the leading cause of death for men under the age of 44 is suicide? Uh, I did not know that, no, I did not. Yeah, I'm aware of that. If I'd had to guess what it was, that would have been one of the ones. No, I didn't know that. No, that's terrible. What do you think we can do to um, help them in this issue, address this issue? I certainly think we need to become more aware of actually discussing it. I certainly think that women are more aware of discussing it. They'll certainly talk to their friends about it, talk to peers about it, colleagues. They'll talk to healthcare professionals. But I think men, it's not seen as a manly thing to discuss mental health issues. And I think it really needs to be a culture change and they need to be more aware of it. Probably more education in schools. I guess getting the word out there, make it known more. Yeah. Would you talk about it with your friends? 
Uh, if, the, if it comes up, yeah, absolutely. City centres like this, why can't there be a conversation room or somewhere where they can have a free coffee and drop in and feel more open to talking about it? What do you think we can do to help men address this issue? I have no idea. I've, I've thought about it a lot and I really don't know. It is a hidden thing and I feel that if we communicate with each other more that we can share these things. We're making campaigns about it. We're trying to introduce people to the concept that's all right. So. I mean, you've got to keep going with that. It's not something to be ashamed of. It's something that you should own up and sort of be strong enough to say, yeah. Welcome back. Some uh, really interesting comments on the streets. Welcome, yeah. Sandra. Thank you. Hi. What stood out to you from all the things that were mentioned there? Uh, I think a, a clear uh, response that there's not enough done in terms of raising awareness. We've, we've come a certain... Uh, a level with Beyond Blue, organisations mm. like that. Mm. But when it comes to men and depression, I don't think there's enough awareness that it actually does affect men so so greatly. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I think you're spot on. I think the, we have come a long way to some degree compared to 10 years ago. We're having conversations like this. There is There are more promotions out there. But you, you, there's a whole hidden conversation still, I think, that we that we need to find out more uh, opportunity to, to normalise and validate the experiences that men have mm. yeah. in the community. Peter, was it uh, anything resonate there yes. from your own experience? Uh, well, uh, in terms of personal awareness in regard to your own mental health, that's very important. Uh, but with the program that uh, we run, uh, we're very different in as much as while that is a part of the focus, it's not the main focus. The main focus is on the mate of the person who's doing it tough. Mm. Because often we don't recognise, we don't see that red light saying there's something wrong. Mm. And we sometimes need our mate. And it might be someone we work mm. with say, you know, mate, I've noticed some changes in you. Mm. Uh, I'm available to talk. I'm worried about you. Mm. And I want to listen. So you need that. As we said before, mm. men are reluctant to talk about their stuff, mm. but often they're not invited. And if you create that awareness uh, around the individual's doing it tough mm. and give them the support they'll get through uh, hopefully um, more successfully than they are at the moment. So is that training um, both sexes really to ask those questions? Uh, like is a man more more likely to open up to a woman as opposed to a, a, a mate? It, it differs mm. on the individual. When we do our um, second level of training for example it's all volunteer based there's not appointments by the employer and we look for um, variety. We look for different ethnic groups, mm. different age groups, and, dif uh, and uh, gender uh, changes. So uh, the person has a choice as to who they, they go to, that they feel more comfortable. Mm, and probably with. even different personality types, because yes. some people feel more. There's something interesting in the question around it, because I, th I think that what sometimes happens that men don't want to burden their partners. There's a, mm. th this is part of this kind of yeah. uh, internalised view of being a guy, I suppose, that they don't want to share it with their family or their friends because they don't want to burden them. And so they get stuck to know where to go. And this is, some of these programs and, and even going to professionals uh, actually diffuses that discomfort for some people, even though it actually is a really important part of an intimate relationship to learn how to be open with your partner around your own mm -hmm. health issues. So I think women are great at that. They're, 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 I get referrals from women about their, their, their partner and that kind of works pretty well. But sometimes it doesn't work so well because they feel like they're being told what to do. Mm. So you get this other reaction that can go on. It doesn't feel it's natural and normal, like they're mm. actually wanting to do it themselves. Exactly. They're going because someone else wants them to do it. Exactly. And I that thought, can be a problem. Sometimes. I thought one of the comments um, by the lady, surely in a city like this, there could be a, a drop-in type a place room, where you could just go right, and yeah. have a chat and, you know, say, yeah. look, I've been feeling this way for such a... And then yes. someone could actually say, well, you actually need to go and see your GP. Yes. Or you actually need longer term thing, yeah. or you know, clearly you've just had a bad day. The, the greatest mm -hmm. thing about that comment is that there, there, are, there are actually options. I mean, people don't know about them, but there are options around other community groups. There are options around uh, youth clubs or, or uh, religious groups and community groups. But there's also this kind of tendency to uh, pathologize the experience. So people often associate this idea of st the stigma around depression mm -hmm. as being a mental illness. There's something wrong with me. 
and there's a kind of pullback that goes with that. So it's not normalised and validated enough in the community. And also the expense issues as well, um, because yeah. I mean, you can go to your GP and get an MH referral. That's right. Uh, but that's ten visits, and if you've got a if you're on well, yeah. 10 visits are going to be a starting point. Yes. Then what happens? Yeah, mm. exactly. And then people get a little bit left sort of high and dry. Mm. Online chat rooms, I imagine, would, would benefit. Like if, yeah. if people struggle to go and get help yes. um, and, and the stigma's still there. Yeah, and know. there are forums out there. Yeah. I mean, Beyond Blue have got a forum. A few other places have got forums where guys mm. can talk anonymously if they yeah. need to. Um, there's a lot of, uh, in recent times, you know, um, consultations online, email counselling and Skype conversations as well as a way of getting into the, into the, the, the discussion in some way. So, we'll put yeah. some of those things, I think, on, on our uh, website just yeah. so people know. Yes. I think that if I could summarise all of street talk and the, the, the first section was, we don't talk about this. What is, what is the option? We need to talk about it. Yeah. Sandra, thanks yeah. for coming and Thank talking you. about it. Thank you. To see more of Sandra and Street Talk, head over to theexchangetv.com.au. Back with more right after this. Welcome back. Can you spot the difference? Yes, you can. And you can see that Rob is donning a hard hat here. And this, this is all up. part of the process of providing hope. And in this particular case, in the construction industry, where they have clearly marked labels um, uh, for people who are made aware of mental wellness, who people who can help further, and then with the blue one, people who can assist in situations of suicidality. Amazing effort for awareness and mm -hmm. to bring hope. And some of the other areas that we can bring hope in, Howard, what, what, what would you say? Well, one of the most important things about this is that, uh, first of all, you don't have to do it on your own. There are people there uh, available to talk to. But the other thing is that the mind changes, the brain changes, Talking is part of helping men and women to change the way they think about their own lives. And it's happening right now, today, tomorrow, the next day, and so on. So there's always those possibilities out there. And there are some amazing stories of recovery and change. And it's worth people remembering that that's possible. That's Peter, I absolutely love what you guys are doing. This is sensational. It's so right for the construction industry. I'm wondering, are there other industries uh, that could actually adopt something similar? Or have there been? Or uh, should there be? Uh, there should be. Uh, and we're currently uh, talking to the Australian Minerals Council about um, developing mates in mining. Oh, wow. uh, brilliant. And uh, uh, we need... We're going through that consultation process because... For it to be adapted to another industry, it has to reflect the nature, the culture, the traditions of that industry. Uh, and uh, I'm a construction worker. I'm not going to try and um, guess what the model in its uh, final uh, makeup is going to look like. That's up to the industry to decide. Uh, and it, it needs to have a bipartisan approach. So all levels of the industry are represented in terms of the development of the program. We'll be there, we'll assist. Yeah. And, and what about the Are You OK Day, Howard? Mm -hmm. how, how have you found the response? People asking others, are you OK? I think it's a great idea. I still think that men probably get a little bit, what's the question about? Yeah. <laughs> and understanding what it means. Because the most guys say, yeah, I'm fine, I'm all right. Yeah. So it's, I think you said something earlier about um, asking the questions and asking again and keep asking and be curious and be interested without pushing. And men get to start thinking more about what it means to be okay, looking out for symptoms, but looking out for, it's a really good question to ask, you know, because then you don't have to start worrying about holding it all on your own. Yeah. So yeah. I like, it's a great question. Yeah. You actually change the dynamics of the relationship yeah. when you get into yeah. that space. Uh, all of a sudden, the person you just wanna say, this, this guy really does care about yeah, me. it's wonderful. Mm. It's excellent. Uh, and it takes the relationship to a different level. Wonderful. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Howard, for joining us today on the program. You give some thank really you. good things to think about. We Great. appreciate it very much. Don't forget, we'd love to hear your thoughts and ideas on what's important to you. Hope you can join us next time. See you then.